Hello, welcome to jasonchats.com and also to my Jason Chats YouTube channel. Um, do I look tired? Because I feel tired. So basically what's happened since yesterday since I last done a, I don't know, anything really, um, I've not been able to do, well I've not been, I've not felt rather able to do a let me bore you to sleep recording for my podcast um, today, but I'm hoping to do one tomorrow. But it's okay, I don't have to do them every single day, it's... Uh, some stuff came up, so I focused on that. So, um, I want to talk about my last video that I did, the last Jason Chats, yesterday's one. Uh, Andre, I was having my breakfast, right? And my friend was sitting at the table, I was sitting over there on the black chair, and we were just chatting. And there was a bang on the window, like a real, like, bang as if maybe a bird hit the window or something. So I put my, I just, you know, went over there. And then my friend said, look. But it was a kind of, uh, oh look, it wasn't even like a, um, it didn't seem like an urgent look the way, but it, apparently it was just really quick. I turned around, Andre had his face in my bowl of shreddies, shred. It's uh, it's an English cereal. I don't know if you have it in. Um, it's like malted wheat squares or whatever. But it's I love them. He didn't like just grab one and run off. He stuck his whole face in there and started just licking and eating the the stuff. So I filmed him. I'd only had about a half of the bowl, and so I was, so it was a bit frustrating, but I thought well, I'd film him, and he completely ignored me. But I really shouldn't have, I've got to stop letting him, I don't normally let him drip milk, because they've got um, lactose intolerance, so I don't let him drink milk. I don't want him to be ill, I love him, you know, more than the world, so I don't want him to be ill. However, <laughs> there's, I think it's a little bit of my brain thinking, he's just stolen my breakfast. Fuck him and his stomach. If he's going to be ill now and have the trots, then serves him right for eating me breakfast. But I don't think that was going on in my head, but I think maybe in the past there's been a little bit... I, I'm wondering if that was going on like subconsciously. Uh, but I do often give him, or when I eat my breakfast, he will jump on the chair and try and grab the food out of my mouth. And I've got into a habit of giving it to him. So I guess it does have a little bit of milk in it. So perhaps I've got to stop doing that. But it feels like a bonding thing. It seems like something that we share, we have our breakfast together. And... It's not so much that I've tamed a wild animal uh, to eat out of my mouth, not out of my mouth, but like to bite, to take stuff out of my mouth, because he's never going to bite me. Like he's, he bites me sometimes, but he's never going to like attack me and try and hurt my mouth or my face or anything. Um, but so it's not like a trick, but it just feels like a little bonding, nice father-son time, you know, and I think I'm going to have to stop doing that, because he, he just wants my breakfast, he wants to eat the whole lot, and now instead of grabbing it out of my mouth, grabbing a piece, running off and eating it on the floor or hiding it somewhere, he just <laughs> lets, I was spitting everywhere, sorry, he lets it drop onto my chest and he eats it on my chest, so, so that he doesn't have to move and he's there ready for the next bit. 
So I'm getting all this stuff all over my chest, all, all over my titties. I'm getting like bits of milk and breakfast and stuff. It's not a good look. So um, I think I'm going to have to stop doing it, but I just... Maybe it's because I'm not very strict with my own feeding impulses towards myself. So, you know, like chocolate and drinking Coke. At the moment, I'm still smoking, but I'm planning to get that gone. Uh, and so maybe if I was a little bit more stricter on myself, I could be a bit more stricter on him. However, uh, I got delivery, food delivery uh, yesterday, I think Thursday, when, yeah, Thursday, yesterday. I didn't buy any chocolate at all. I bought chocolate ice, ice, chocolate ices, yeah, chocolate ices, a pack of six or something. So I didn't, you know, but I didn't buy any chocolate bars, no crunchies or Twixes or anything like that, which I do sometimes when, well, I do often when I go into Iceland and they're all on special offer, so I just buy loads of crap. Excuse me, a uh, bit of gas there, in case you wonder what it was. And however, now, today, the government have brought in a sugar tax, which means some of these things that were cheap may start to be less cheap. I mean, I've noticed, I don't know about you, I don't know about where you are, but if you're in England, you get these like multi-packs and it's like, oh, uh, one pound or two pound for like six bars of chocolate. It's like, oh, wow, you know, they're 58 pence or no, 85 pence if you buy them in a, uh, a corner shop or in a garage or something like that, a news agent. And you get them home and they're like that big, you know? I could have a cockfight with it. Seriously, it's that's gone just the right size. And I just think like either the chocolate's got smaller or my mouth has got bigger. And talking about things getting bigger and smaller. I was actually talking to my friend earlier. Do you think that our poos, collectively, our poos are getting smaller? We were thinking about that earlier. Because I can't remember the last time that I had to use a toilet plunger. I can't remember the last time the toilet got blocked and I had to, you know, big long thing with a big rubber thing, sucky thing, like that. Um, you don't have to make that noise when you do it, but it makes it more interesting, especially for people looking in the window. Uh, but it's the whole thing is I don't remember the last time that I had to use one of those. So our poos must be getting smaller. Just thinking, I don't know. I just I remember when I was younger, I was blocking the toilet regularly. Sometimes, I mean, really, I remember it felt like I'd given birth to a donkey's cock. I mean, it was some of them were so big, they'd be like sticking out the edge. You know, and um, and of course you get the double flushes, don't you? When it's you know it's got it's full of the toilet but there's still stuff coming out so you have to like flush your toilet and kind of stand up hoping that it's not going to overflow into your trousers and your shoes and your socks but that has happened in to the worst thing is to happen when you're in public i don't mean you go into the toilet in the street because that's frowned upon. What I mean is, you know, if you're in a pub or a restaurant or not that I really go into, I can't remember the last time I went to a restaurant either. So it's quite a while. Um, but a pub again, it's got to be a couple of years since I went to a pub. I'm not a drinker. No, can you imagine what I would look like if I was a drinker? My face is red enough already. Imagine, I'd just like be one big vein 
veiny. You know what I mean? It's, it'd be terrible. That's why, I mean, I have gone through periods of drinking. Uh, but generally, I don't drink. Well, I never drink alcohol, really, at all now. And when I do drink, I'm a, a proper lightweight. Seriously, if I, I could get two weak cans of lager, and what, when I say weak, you know, the, the strength of the lager, and I could really probably be drunk or quite tipsy, merry, whatever other words you want to use for that, just in two cans. I'm going like that, and obviously they're proper like pint, pint cans. But I can't, so, and I don't like alcohol because the buzz I used to get when I was younger doesn't happen now. It, I know it's the whole cliche, you know, uh, alcohol is a depressant. And uh, yeah, people are like, yeah, yeah, sure. If it was a depressant, people wouldn't be going out drinking and having a great time. But for me, alcohol seems to put me in a quite a down mode. So I, that's one of the reasons I don't drink. Plus, and I'm 47 now, I'm 48 in August. And the fact you can tell when you get to your 40s, getting onto 50s, is you keep mentioning your age. It's a weird one, isn't it? So uh, I'm... For years now, I've generally got up once during the night and gone to the toilet. Real wee-wee. And it's not my prostate. It's just my general... Just what I do. So I've been doing it for a long, long time. But if I drink, if I drink alcohol in the evening, I'll be in and out, in and out, in and out, all, you know, all night. And it's annoying. Because... Which is annoying, there's no really reason behind it. It's just, especially if you share a house with somebody or with a group of people. So I've lived in houses where there's maybe two toilets or one toilet between six rooms. Um, it's not good. It's, it's not so bad if, you've, if, you, if it's just a, a wee, a number one, because you can do it out of the window. But if it's a number two, um, but you still can do it out the window, I suppose, but you got to think about the people below, really, haven't you? <laughs> not, not when you're pissing, but when you're pooing. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's hard for someone to forgive you for that. It would be, I feel when it comes to pooing on someone, that it feels like it's something that you'd need to be some kind of contractual agreement sorted out legally before it happens um, I'm not really into that kind of stuff anyway so I don't know what my point is my point anyway going back to there was a reason why I was saying this but I've forgotten what it is so I'm tired last night my friend uh, came came around and he phoned me and he was locked out of his flat so he couldn't get into his home uh, I won't go into details because it's private but he basically didn't have uh, he couldn't get in so he stayed here overnight and neither of us really got any sleep and he didn't have his keys and in the end we managed to get get the locksmith in then get that all sorted um, today but it, was, it took a, it was quite a lot of uh, Baffing around, trying to get it sorted and that. So my routine of getting up that I've been doing recently, getting up in the morning, and the first thing I do is after I took me tablet that I have to take an hour before I eat, sit on my bed in the bedroom, keep the door closed, leave Andre in his cage until I finished, and I make the let me bore you to sleep, and I just talk. And at that time in the morning, my mind is more receptive to being able to I could say it's receptive to being able to be boring but I'm recording this at 20 past 11 in the evening and I think we can all agree that I'm pretty boring now so you know I think but I'm, I'm extra boring there's that extra element a little bit added you know in the morning and I think my mind works a bit 
bit more fluidly because I haven't just taken any medication. I've gone maybe seven, eight hours without eating, without drinking, or half from water. I've not got any caffeine really in my system, not really any sugar. Um, I've not smoked, so I've got no nicotine in my system, you know, um, and I've got no medication, none of the antidepressants. I know it's still kind of in the system, but I've not sort of taken anything. So i am kind of got quite a clear head, clear-minded to a degree when I'm doing these let me bore you to sleep sessions and it's for a podcast that I've got but you can um, you can find them on YouTube and you can also find them on that's yeah my website is a link and jasonnewland.com stuff but the reason I'm talking about it is I didn't get to do it today and I, I feel kind of out of sorts of it because I didn't I'm trying to get some kind of routine in my life, a little bit more of a routine where um, I'm doing things that I enjoy doing, things that are meaningful to me. And by routine, I don't mean I'm getting up at eight o'clock every morning and doing the Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast things. But ideally, whatever time I get up, that's when I do them. So if I get up at eight, if I get up at 11 or two, whatever time it is, I'll do that. So I enjoy doing them. And I feel quite pleased with myself. Just for the, the, the reason being that I've stuck to a few things that I've been doing. The hypnotic buffets that I podcast that I do every Monday and you can catch them on hypnoticbuffet.com I've got lots of pod, lots of websites um, excuse me gas coca cola make me gassy so I've got that podcast and I do that every Monday and I think I've done I don't know I've done 18 I think I've done 18 podcasts now so, um, and I've been doing them every Monday for at least the last six or seven weeks. The ones before that I was doing in January, but I didn't do them on a Monday, I don't think. But I might have done them on a Monday, I really don't remember. But I've done them every Monday for quite a few, like a good two or three months nearly. So I'm pleased with that. And I'm not getting like massive download play figures for them on the actual podcast or on the website but I am getting I do get quite a few on my main podcast which is on SoundCloud so it's quite and also on other different ones just like with the let me let me bore you to sleep right on that podcast I've had only a few I actually set up the podcast yesterday um, even though I've been doing the, the sessions and I've been uploading them onto my YouTube channel for the sleep hypnosis sessions. And, um, but they let me bore you to sleep. They actually, on the SoundCloud, main SoundCloud account channel podcast thing, I'm getting each day is about 100 plays by the end of the day maybe more for each new one and then it continues to grow and on my sleep hypnosis podcast on Podomatic again they're on there and they're getting uh, plays so there's a lot more plays and also on Spreaker as well uh, which is I've got a podcast on there I've got all my podcasts on Spreaker but with Spreaker they they don't just import the RSS feed, they actually download all of your, all of the podcast audios. So then people play them. So it takes up room. Um, so I've got 500 hours worth of, I've got 250, work, 250 hours used from the podcasts out of 500 available on that plan that I've got with Spreaker 
throughout all the about 12 different podcasts or 13 different podcasts so yeah i'm quite pleased they're growing and the i keep saying the same phrase the sleep let me boy to sleep is on podbean.com and the hypnotic buffet is also on podbean but they're also available on other web you know but there is they're the main hosts so it's all I think it sounds a bit muddly, a bit muddly, and it's expensive as well. It's costing me money to do all this, and I got paid on Wednesday, and I was minus two pound this morning. No, actually, no, I'm, I'm lying. No, I got paid on Wednesday. I was minus two pound on Tuesday night. I got paid Wednesday morning, and tonight I've got... I think 14 pounds, actually probably less, I think nine pound now. Yeah, so I've got nine pounds something in the bank. That's all the money I owe, that I own in the world. Because so many bills go out and the podcast costs money. The Spreaker's about $20 a month. Uh, one of the podcasts from Podomatic's $20 a month. Internet's 40 pounds a month. Um, Podbean, both of those are, I think, $14 a month for each one of those. So, yeah, it adds up. It does add up. Um, and I was going to do a quick high, actually, to hit, um, Boston Chicky. Uh, hi. And it was a lovely video you did the other day. It's really cute. Really cute. It's really lovely. Thank you. Um, for posting that, it was lovely to see, and I reposted it on my channel, Facebook page. A big hello to Sebastian, my friend in Germany. Um, we missed each other on Skype, but I hope that your uh, accommodation's working out okay. Maybe let me know how you got on there. And I want to say hello to Terry Tanktop on YouTube for. Uh, your comments and for subscribing to my uh, Jason Chats channel Jason Chats Bipolar Vlog YouTube channel there are other, other people that I'd like to thank but I can't think off the top of my head uh, I should write this stuff down but um, I'd just like to thank everyone really that not so much for the vlogs because this is a self-indulgent thing and you know it's it's more personal and some people that watch these have actually had uh, interaction with me via Facebook podcasts that I've done or uh, YouTube podcast like live broadcasts that I've done which I suppose I should try and do again at some point uh, maybe try and do one live a week perhaps but I'm having problems with my internet um, I was just trying to watch Netflix just now and the, the internet is just it's, I'm playing it and it's like a, a 1970s film it's like that kind of quality video like the, the video of the, on YouTube back in 2006 that kind of quality really grainy and you know like my videos I suppose in the past hopefully they're a bit better uh, visual quality these days um, so yeah it's it's annoying so I don't know what's happening with the internet and I don't know how long it's going to take for this to upload to YouTube but everything I do on YouTube I also back up onto my own web you know um, laptop as well as to my Vimeo channel so all my videos, whatever they are, whether they're Jason Chats or Hypnosis, they're all uploaded to the Vimeo. So there's 709 or 710 videos on there. There's a few missing, there's a few that I've not uploaded yet, but I will do that when I get around to it, just in the process of organising everything. But that's it really. Um, all's okay very tired but um, it's okay to be tired
I thought, but I've had a, been sneezing and coughing today as well. So I've kind of, I was going to visit family, but I've put it off because there's a new newborn baby, my niece, and also I've got a niece and nephew that are a year old. And I don't want to be passing on um, the lurgy to them if I've got a cold coming and it feels I'm a bit blocked up, I've been, you know, just a bit sniffy and so I'm deciding not to do that. It might be I'm run down or something, I don't know. But I feel a lot better now than I did. Right, anyway, I'm going to go. See you next time. Bye. Also, my hand's hurting. See you later. Bye.